confession time. Each month, upon receipt of the latest issue of Rotary Magazine, the first thing I turn to isn't the cover story or even the table of contents to check out all that the issue contains. No, I head directly to the last few pages where one finds the crossword puzzle. Anyone know a five-letter word beginning with H that fits the clue fence alternative? It usually takes me more than one sitting to finish the entire puzzle, and that's fine with me. Hedge. Yeah, that's the answer. Hedge. Word puzzles provide many people with countless hours of entertainment and test our spelling ability. So today, it's time for another edition of Fun with Words. In this episode, we'll be seeing how the addition of a few letters can transform a word, such as the word power. The noun power has several definitions, including ability to act or produce an effect, having legal authority, and yeah, it's another name for electricity. Is the power turned on? Now, Let's add the letters E-M to the front of power, making the verb empower, which Merriam-Webster says is to give official authority or legal power to someone. Tack on a couple of more letters, this time at the end, and we get the adjective empowered. Merriam-Webster defines empowered as having the knowledge, confidence, means, or ability to do things or make decisions for one's self. Power can be both good and bad. You can have powerful enemies or powerful allies. Power, that is, electricity, runs useful, often life-saving equipment, but it also can kill a person when one is exposed to it. Being empowered, I suppose, could be a bad thing, but we don't usually think of it that way. Empowered means having freedom, which we humans tend to like. It means having skills or abilities which can be used for evil, but mostly we see empowerment as a benefit to mankind. Good bosses are generally thought to be those who empower their employees to do what needs to be done. Bosses who micromanage everything usually fail at getting the best out of their workforces and serving customers. The primary reason to have employees is to multiply the ability to serve others. Rarely can one person run a decent, packed restaurant doing the cooking, the baking, the cleaning, the dishwashing, the waiting on customers, bussing tables, working the cash register, and so much more all by himself for herself. One needs workers. Being a human himself, Jesus found there was more work to be done than any one human could accomplish especially on the tight deadline he had. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, he said in today's reading from Matthew. He could spread the gospel much quicker and efficiently by empowering his disciples. 
But as we'll find out later in today's service, being empowered does come with responsibilities rather than privileges and comforts. By the end of this service, we hope you'll feel energized about being empowered. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, and welcome to the online worship service of Robinson Memorial Presbyterian Church in Gastonia, North Carolina for Sunday, June 18th, 2023. Just before 11 a.m. on Wednesday this week, the sun will appear at its most northern point in the sky for the year. The summer solstice is the day in June with the most sunlight and signals the official beginning of the summer season. After Wednesday, our daylight hours will begin to decrease until winter comes in December. Today is also Father's Day in the U.S. Hope all of you fathers out there have a great day. Every day is a great day for worshiping God, but we particularly set aside Sundays for praising the Father of all creation. Please join us in our responsive call to worship as today's service gets underway. What shall we return to you, O God, for all of your bounty to us? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will give you thanksgiving and call on your name in the presence of all the people. Let us worship God. Today's opening hymn of praise is Living for Jesus. Please sing along as Ashley provides the music.
In 1 John we read, Children of God, I am speaking these things to you that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. With this in mind, let us confess our sins before God. How easily we pat ourselves on the back, gracious Lord, for the lives we lead. We welcome the praise of others, but have a little compassion for those who have failed us. We assume that a comfortable life is our birthright, yet believe poor choices produce suffering for those around us. We boast of the good we do, but forget to thank you for all that you have given to us. Forgive us for breaking your heart and disappointing your hopes for us. As we seek to follow your Son, may we be found with those whose lives are barren, with those who know little laughter in their day, with those who have received no love from others. For in their presence we will find our Lord and Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote, Through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the New Testament book of Acts, the Apostle Paul is recorded as reminding us that it is more blessed to give than receive. We are so thankful for the gifts, tithes, and offerings given by you to support the ministries and missions of Robinson Memorial Presbyterian. It in part is what powers our work here. At the end of this video, you'll find on screen our mailing address, a website address, and a QR code that you can scan with your smartphone. We invite you to contribute to the work of our little church in Gastonia, no matter where you are from. But now, it's time to dedicate your offerings to the service of our Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, you urge us to travel lightly and proclaim your peace. Relieve us of whatever hinders our mission and give to us sustenance for the journey. The gifts we offer are symbols of our commitment. By whatever peace we foster, help us to heal antagonisms that divide your people. And may our actions provide hospitality, even in the midst of hostility. Amen.
Our New Testament reading for today comes to us from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Listen for the word of our Lord. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'll go where you want me to go is the title of today's hymn preparation. You'll find the lyrics on your screen.
Our gospel reading comes to us from Matthew. We'll begin with chapter 9, verse 35, reading through chapter 10, verse 23. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff. For the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, Search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, Leave that home or town and shake the dust off of your feet. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly, I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. 
If you could possess one superpower, what would it be? Often that question gets used in group settings, you know, where people are just meeting each other for the first time. And apparently gets used in some job interviews nowadays. Would you choose the ability to fly and have x-ray vision like Superman? How about supersonic speed like the Flash? Maybe you'd enjoy the power to be invisible. Or to read other people's minds. Or perhaps you'd like to quickly bulk up, such as the Hulk, or sling webs like Spider-Man. If you're not quite sure what superpower best suits you, well, you're in luck. I did a Google search, found countless quiz sites on the internet to help you out. A BuzzFeed quiz determined my superpower would be mind control. Although I'm not sure how questions like pick a snack from a provided list or select one of the listed TV shows can divine what superpower would be best for me. Although mind control does sound pretty cool. According to the website Statista, a survey in 2018 found 34% of those asked said the superpower they most wanted was the ability to heal others. When we think of Jesus' ministry here on earth, it's hard not to think of all the miracles or signs he performed that involved healing. The first verse of today's reading from Matthew stated, Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Now, to be honest, it shouldn't come as a big surprise that the Son of God could heal every disease and sickness. It would be rather disappointing if he couldn't. What may be surprising is just how much this omnipotent God cared about people. Cared so much for them that he was willing to empower mortals to help the multitude of lost sheep Jesus found. Powerful people are not known for sharing their power, are they? But then, this is the God that we worship and praise. The one who cared for his creation so much that he came to earth in the form of a human, giving up the comforts of heaven for the harsh reality of life on this planet. He found the needs were too many for one man to do everything. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The immediate answer to this labor shortage was for Jesus to empower his closest disciples. The twelve, as we know them, Peter, John, and the rest. Matthew wrote that Jesus gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Gave them authority. That's an important phrase to remember. The power to heal was not something they were born with or even acquired from the bite of a radioactive spider. It was not a skill they developed or learned after years of schooling. No, this was a gift given by the grace of God to be used for a time under the specific and unique authority of Jesus. By their own power, they could not heal a single person. 
empowered by Christ, they could move mountains. When you think about powerful people, what comes to your mind? Someone with lots of resources, big houses, luxury cars, Rolex watches, servants and employees at their beck and call. Do you think about gold and silver and limitless cash? How about the ability to do just about anything you want to do? Whenever you want to do it. Wherever you want to do it. If that's what you associate with power, well, you're not alone in this world. But that description does not define what it means to be empowered by Jesus. The gift of empowerment comes with specific instructions and duties. It's from our passage in Matthew. We read that the first duty may not be what you expect it to be. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Before you lay a hand on a single person, before you make a blind person see or a lame person walk, before any of that, you must share the good news. The kingdom of heaven is near. Preach first. Tend to the needs of the people second. And by the way, I don't believe that means preventing people from being helped, fed, or sheltered until they've endured an hour-long sermon. There is no quid pro quo here. No restrictions on help depended on a profession of faith by the recipient. But before you heal someone, let them know that God loves them. And because of that love, life itself has meaning. Then heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. In other words, don't be stingy with God's gifts. You didn't earn the gifts, so don't make someone else earn a gift from you. Remember earlier we were talking about our notion of the traits of powerful people? Compare that to what Jesus tells his empowered disciples. As he sends them out into the fields to labor on his behalf, they are not to take any money with them, not a single traveler's check or credit card. They are not to get a room at the local Ritz-Carlton or even at a Holiday Inn Express. Don't pack a lot of clothes and toiletries. That's just baggage that will slow you down you will rely on the hospitality of others for shelter and food. And if they refuse to accommodate you or close their ears and hearts to your message of God's love, don't try to retaliate or punish them. Just move on. Shake the dust of that place from your feet. It's not your place to condemn. Just move on. Does this sound like something powerful people do? But then that's a key difference between the powerful and the empowered. The empowered always remember they are not the source of the power they have. God is. Powerful people tend to see their power coming from themselves. I am powerful because of whom 
I made myself to be. <laughs> I am my own master. I suppose there's an allure to thinking that way, especially because of what Jesus warns his disciples they will face as empowered people of God. You are going to be arrested on my account, he tells them. You'll be flogged and interrogated. Jesus does not paint a pretty picture here, does he? But being empowered means one does not have to fear such troubles. And when you are made to answer for the hope and love you have, the words will be given to you by the Spirit. Jesus goes on to inform them that they will be hated by some people for what they say and do in their role as His authorized agents. Families will be torn apart because they don't understand or care to understand God's message of love and acceptance, something that still happens in today's world. But you, who have been empowered, stay strong. In the end, you will be saved. In the end, you will be saved. I find what Jesus says next rather interesting. As empowered people, it's okay for you to leave a place when you are persecuted, when Christ's message is rejected. You know the saying, there's plenty of fish in the sea? If the message is rejected in one town or one home, there's plenty of other towns and homes where you are needed. Powerful people go wherever they want and whenever they want to go. Empowered people are led by God to be wherever there are hurting people because they know that's where they will find Jesus. Not in the halls of power, but in the hovels of the powerless. Empowered people do more than pray for others. They go out into the fields to labor where there is plenty to harvest. And doing so doesn't require splashy miracles. No, just living examples of what God's love is how we love one another and our neighbors. And the truth is, we've all been empowered by Christ to do just that. Loving others in thought, word, and deed. That's what it means to be empowered. How will we use our empowerment? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the Lord in prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for your continued presence in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. As Abraham promised the visitors to his tent some water, we give you thanks for our baptism, which sets us apart. As Abraham sought to bring bread to refresh them, we thank you for the Lord's table around which we may gather. As he prepared the feast and set it before them, we give thanks that we may approach your throne of grace during this service of worship. You continue to grace our lives through the many blessings you provide. We thank you for our families, and especially today, our fathers, 
with whom we travel through this journey of faith. We thank you for friends who keep vigil with us through the good times and the bad times. We thank you for the strangers we meet and how we might entertain angels unawares. You continue to surprise us through the gift of your Holy Spirit. When we think we are most in control of our lives, you startle us into awareness that your will shall be done. When we walk through the valleys of our own darkness and despair, you provide the light of the gospel to guide us to safe havens. Gracious Lord, we call on you today to be with those who are on our minds and in our hearts. We pray today for Barbara Plyler and for Beth Sanders, for Silva and Lee and Susie, for Marilyn, for Joyce Bell, for Penny and her travels, for Moselle and her family. We continue our prayers for Rick and Nancy, for Mac and Darlene, Pat Button and Vicki, Judy, Lorraine Miller, for Jerry and Sandra, for Adrian, Doug and Ashley, for Debbie Alt, for Alan and Ted Abbott, for Mitchell and Bill Sanders, for Martin, for Becky, for David, for Brantley and for Tiffany, for Michaela and Greg Fail and Johnny Frazier. We continue our prayers for Kay and Lorraine, for Bruce, for Shirley Barker, for Linda and Claudette, for TC and Lauren, for Ashley and Dan, for Ray and Debbie, for Amber and for Sherry, for Terry and for Morgan, for Barbara Moses, for Henry and Gary, for Ronnie, for Jean Dutton and for Nancy Denton. Almighty God, you have called us to serve you. Yet, without your grace, we are unable to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may be in all things, direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, Christians, let us say what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which may be found on your screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we part company for today, 
we end with the hymn, Take the Name of Jesus with You. Please, sing along. That precious name. Oh, how sweet. Thank you for spending a part of your precious time with us today, worshiping the God who empowers us with love. If you found yourself being empowered by this video, please consider giving it a like or a thumbs up. Leave a comment and hit that share button so that others may hear the gospel message. As always, you are invited to join us in person in our sanctuary for our 11 a.m. Sunday morning services. But we'll also be right here online each Sunday at noon or whenever you like. It's okay to watch this and worship with us any day of the week. As God's own, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, and crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and give you His peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.